Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bourbon Bar. I'm Holden and today we're going to be reviewing Blade & Bow Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Now for those of you who don't know what Blade & Bow Bourbon is, it is a 91 proof, non-age stated, and no mash bill information present bourbon. And it is a, a company that had gotten a hold of some Stitzel Weller barrels. For those of you who don't know what Stitzel Weller is, maybe try looking up the word pappy once in your life. and. Uh, Basically, Stizzle Weller made a lot of the Pappies and the William Lou Wellers and all that kind of stuff back in the day um, before they eventually had to sell over to Sazerac or Buffalo Trace. Um, I'm sure, pretty sure that's how it went. But long story short, this bourbon is aged using the Solera aging method. So basically, from what I gather, it's kind of like um, as they're pulling whiskey out of a barrel, they're putting more whiskey into the barrel and um, they're always or they're always taking some of the last whiskey in the barrel and adding it to like a new batch of whiskey So technically every one of these bottles has a tiny little bit of Stitzel Weller in it how much is probably like a drop maybe two at most um, But there's Stitzel Weller in here, which allows them to put it on the label um, Everywhere there's one there 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 um, And I think two or three times back here. So in, in total there's like eight or so Stitzel Wellers on the actual bottle. But uh, one cool thing about this is uh, it comes with a little key on the neck tag and on that key is a kind a number two. I don't know if you guys can see that. And basically what the keys represent for Blade & Bow is there are five rules or steps to make um, their whiskey. And they're right here on the side of the bottle. Inspired by the historic Stitzel Weller distillery established in 1935 in Louisville, Kentucky, Reowned home of the world's finest bourbon. So that's one of their steps in this. Um, step two would be crafted with carefully selected straight bourbon whiskeys, including the last remaining bourbon ever produced by Stitzel Weller. So that's the second uh, Stitzel Weller I've seen on this part. Matured using the rigorous Solera aging method, preserving our rarest stocks and the spirit of Stitzel Weller. That's the third Stitzel Weller on here. Aged and charred in American white oak barrels to create whiskey with notes of sweet toasted cereal, warm winter spice, and dried fruits, which sounds quite pleasant if you ask me. And lastly, uh, the five keys of Blade & Bow once hung on the front door of the iconic Stitzel Weller Distillery. These heavy brass keys represented the five steps of crafting bourbon and symbolized the art of making the world's finest whiskeys. So, that being said, that is what the keys stand for. Now, I'm not sure where I've heard this, I don't know exactly where I'm coming from or if I'm just making it up, but I think a long time ago you used to be able to collect all five keys, hand them in, and get some kind of prize. I always thought it would be really cool if you could collect all five of these keys, hand them in, and get an actual working skeleton key, and that somewhere at the distillery they would have a secret underground um, speakeasy bar type lounge area with a bunch of rare whiskey, some BTAC, and some good prices on stuff. I think they're missing out on a really opportunity if they're not doing that, but it was kind of an idea that I had. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and tear into this whiskey. Uh, so I got this originally in New Orleans. It is not somewhere where I can find it in Wisconsin. I had never seen it before. So when I was in New Orleans on vacation with Lauren, we stopped and I found this and I was like, heck, I'll buy it because I've never seen it before and I've heard things about it. So, you know, that's Dissel Weller name. Obviously, uh, you're going to want to pick up a bottle. It smells really nice so uh, first reaction to just smelling the bottle is that it smells pretty great. Okay so first up for you guys I'm gonna go ahead and get it on the nose and let you guys know how this whiskey smells. Okay so first thing I'm getting honey, uh, sweet oak, almost like candied oak, a light fruit, I want to say pear, definitely has got some pearness going on in this. Um, Smells really nice, actually. Kind of somewhat complex, a little bit, a little bit proofy, to be honest. This is a fifty-dollar whiskey, so it is on the pricier end of like a ninety-one proof whiskey, uh, especially being non-age stated. But all that fifty dollars is coming out of them calling it Stitzel Weller, so there's always that. But it seems like it's got some decent legs to it, so that's always great. Uh, I want to say there might be actually a little bit of cherry in this as well, but there's definitely vanilla. Honey, lots of honey. I can get that bready note, that cereally note um, that they were talking about on the bottle. It is there. I always get that coming across as a bready note and a fresh, like a fresh 
loaf of bread. However, a lot of people might call it cereal or toasted cereal. Um, like they call it all on the bottle. I always just call it like some kind of bready note. If I were guessing, I would guess that there is some kind of wheat in here because that's usually a note that I, uh, so that is a note that I usually incorporate with being a weeded bourbon. Uh, but since this mash bill is unknown, we're not entirely sure. It can be uh, educated though. It can be properly guessed since this does have Stitzelweller stock in it and Stitzelweller is known for making a lot of weeded bourbons. So that's a possibility, but it smells fantastic on the nose. I can't wait to get it on the palate and let you guys know how it is. Okay. So it's got, it does leave a little bit of a nice hug on the way down. Actually, it's really sweet. That honey comes, 100% comes through on the palate. Mid palate, I would say, right as I'm swallowing it, all honey. But right on the front of the palate, I think is almost more of like a light oaky presence and a bit of like cinnamon. I want to say it's like I got a cinnamon spice on it. Uh, it's not too hot, not too overly aggressive, but it's, it's nice and it's sweet. It does have a, <clears throat> a bit of that vanilla, like a fresh vanilla, like a vanilla extract on the palate. Not really super like uh, frosting type vanilla, but it is like a rich vanilla, which plays nicely with that honey and oak note, that light oak note with that spice. Overall, I think this is a well-rounded and uh, well put together whiskey. Is it worth $50? I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna go in for one last taste before I give it a grade and let you guys know if you should be buying this bottle. Okay, one last interesting note that I get on this is a almost like a lemon zest, like just a lemon peel, uh, which is, it just is, it comes through a little bit on the palate right here, which I also I also think goes well with that honey note, almost like a ho lemon honey type tea, um, but there's not really tea flavors in it. It's strictly just that lemon, that honey, that vanilla. It's got some oak and cinnamon. It's very like very well put together, well rounded, and yeah, I think it's it's good whiskey. So that being said, <clears throat> is it worth fifty dollars? Now here's my thing about it: the bottle shape, I like it. I think the blade and bow uh, logo and everything about the the history of the bottle and the story, I think is all awesome. I think it's really cool that it comes with this key. I think that if you don't have a bottle of this and you find one for in the store for fifty dollars, buy it. I think it's a great bottle to have on yourself. I think it's a great story to tell to friends and family when they come over to try it. However, I'm not gonna be <clears throat> running around buying everyone that I see. I'm not gonna stock up and have it on the shelf all the time. It's not the best $50 whiskey out there. It's not the bang for your buck whiskey, but it's good. It's interesting. It's nice and well put together. I think, yeah, I think you guys should buy it if you see it. That being said, what am I gonna give this bottle for a grade? And this bottle, I think it deserves a 7.9. Uh, not quite into that eight category. Like I said, it's good whiskey and you should definitely buy it if you don't have it, but I don't think I can justify spending $50 on this. It's good and some people out there, I'm sure really love it. And it definitely fits right on the palate for some people, but there's other bottles that I would be buying at that $50 mark before I bought this one. However, um, it is good juice, it's well put together, and it is that Stitzelweller uh, name, so it definitely has some clout behind it. I think that's where the $50 mark is coming from, but a 7.9 is all I can give it for that price with this juice. That being said, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. Also, if you guys have had this whiskey and you think that I'm out of my mind and that this is way better than I think it is, let me know in the comments below. But that being said, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new, like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you all in, and I'll see you all in the next class.